Uh, thank you very much, Colm, uh, Lord Mayor, Mr. President, uh, fellow ministers and ladies and gentlemen. It's certainly a great pleasure for me to be here today to help you celebrate another year of success for the Northern Ireland uh, Chamber of Commerce. It's actually my second day running, uh, having lunch at, at City Hall, but yesterday I was actually sitting outside on the lawn in the wonderful sunshine uh, having a sandwich, but it's nice to be inside uh, today. I, I do want to uh, particularly congratulate you on being awarded the British Chambers of Commerce UK Chamber of the Year at the Guildhall in London back in November of 2012. That is a real outstanding achievement. It's also a real honor to be sharing a platform later with uh, Eddie Irvine. And Eddie grew up actually very close to where I now live uh, in the village of Conlig between Bangor and Newton Ards. And I'm pleased to say that at least uh, one of our native sons from Conlig has gone on to make a great impact on the international stage. On the, the motoring theme, I also want to welcome the staff and students from Queen's University School of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering, who have brought along their Formula Ford car, which was built for a UK-wide uh, competition. And five of the school students are currently on placement with either Red Bull Technologies or Mercedes High Performance Engines. This is a fantastic opportunity for them to learn from an elite company in high-profile industry. And I commend both the university and these employers for making this happen. It's work-based learning at its very best. I do want to take this opportunity to address the skills issues uh, within our economy, and in particular to highlight our current major review of apprenticeships and youth training. I'm very conscious that I am, in some respects, responsible for items number four and five on, on Mark's uh, shopping list, and uh, we certainly do get the message with respect uh, to employment law, and hopefully uh, some initial actions are underway in that regard, and more is, is to follow. Um, Evan Poots has asked me to make a special mention that uh, he is clearly delivering on the, the malaria issue, so um, <laughs> health is certainly relevant to our economy. In terms of moving on to skills and continuing on the theme of engines, my job as Minister for Employment and Learning is to ensure that our economy is operating as efficiently as possible. This entails ensuring that our economy and employers are provided with the skilled workers that they need addressing skill shortages and skill mismatches, bringing people closer to the labour market and increasing economic participation. Rebuilding and rebalancing the economy is the top priority for the executive. We have major objectives of growing the private sector, developing a knowledge-based economy and significantly increasing our exports. We largely know what can be the high growth priority sectors with key examples being ICT, advanced manufacturing and engineering, agri-foods, creative industries, and health and life sciences, just to name some. In turn, it will be the skills of our people that largely drive the transformation of our economy. Skills will be central to increasing productivity, and in doing so, will help to close the productivity gap between Northern Ireland and the rest of the United Kingdom, and also within the context of the European Union. I do want to stress that despite the continued delays by other, the executive does remain committed to achieving the capacity to, to lower the rate of corporation tax for Northern Ireland. This remains the most effective way of generating a step change in our economic prospects. Of course, we know that this will not be a silver bullet by itself and can't be effective if we don't also invest in other key economic drivers, such as skills. What we are doing on the skills agenda is of crucial importance in any economic context, but will be even more important in the context of a lower corporation tax. The good news is that we're not simply just waiting for a decision, we're already planning ahead. The Northern Ireland skills strategy clearly demonstrates that our economy will require higher skill levels. For example, by 2020, almost half of our workforce will need to be trained to, to level four or above. We also need to invest in science, technology, engineering and mathematics, and in management and leadership skills. Some of the key interventions that we have already taken include the provision of an additional 1,200 STEM undergraduate places by 2015, and a 60% increase in publicly funded PhDs, all in economically relevant areas. Through our Shared Skills Programme, we're working in partnership with Invest Northern Ireland to provide guarantees that we can provide the very specific training that inward investors require through the development of bespoke training programs within our colleges and universities. Also in recognition of the critical importance of certain sectors to our economy, 
We have established dedicated working groups in ICT, advanced engineering, and food and drink processing involving business, government, and our universities and colleges. Other critical steps include addressing economic inactivity and bringing more people into the workplace. We have a pressing requirement to address youth unemployment. We currently have officials from the OECD with my department at present, and they are clear of the critical importance of work experience. And I want to take this opportunity to thank employers for their support for our youth employment scheme. However, the key intervention that I wish to highlight today is our current major rev review of apprenticeships and youth training. I believe that these reviews have the potential to make the single greatest contribution to changing our skills landscape. Apprenticeships constitute a form of training that is warmly embraced by the business community, where participants are in essence being trained while employed, and where employers in turn reap rewards from their investment in improving the skills and qualification levels of their employees. Employers know that they will be getting people trained in the very particular skills required for their business, and in turn, apprenticeships know, apprentices know that they're being given the skills that are directly relevant to the workplace, and in turn, will have a better chance of sustaining employment. Such is the direct attention to skills shortages and mismatches. I don't believe that it is a coincidence that those countries that most value vocational training, such as Austria, Germany, and Switzerland, have the lowest levels of unemployment in Europe, including very low youth unemployment. My vision is to build on and to, and to enhance our existing provision and to make Northern Ireland the gold standard for apprenticeships. I want this review to ensure that our apprenticeships are at the right level in order to meet the very specific needs of business for a highly skilled workforce and that we have a sufficient supply of apprentices, especially in the key sectors of the economy. In doing this, we want to consider a number of outcomes. Firstly, we should consider how we can extend the apprenticeship model to a much wider range of occupations. Second, we must consider moving the apprenticeship model up the skills ladder, and in doing so, offer a wider range of higher level apprenticeships. Third, we should consider how in turn to offer flexible pathways for people in terms of interaction between apprenticeships and further and higher education. Fourth, we need to consider how employers can, greater have, can have greater influence in terms of shaping training. The employer profile in Northern Ireland is an important consideration, and as we know, SMEs make up the vast majority of businesses. So it's very, it's, it is of critical importance that they are empowered to make a pivotal role in terms of the provision of apprenticeships. Central to this is establishing a parity of esteem between vocational and more traditional academic pathways. They are not different worlds. Ultimately, what our economy requires is higher level skills, and there can be a range of different means by which they can be obtained. I've recently returned from a study visit to Switzerland and had the opportunity to see firsthand how a radical alternative vision for Northern Ireland could work. As Marcus has already outlined, Switzerland is one of the most competitive and wealthiest countries in the world. They have really low unemployment, and incredibly, almost 70% of people go through vocational training. And there is a real transferability between vocational and academic pathways. Business needs to be the, in the driving seat for our future apprenticeship provision. And the voice of employers needs to be part of this process. Genuine stakeholder engagement is therefore key. That's why the review has been advised by an expert panel, including many employers, and I'm pleased that your chief executive, Anne McGregor, is participating on that panel. And in closing, I want to commend the role that's played by the Chamber, alongside the other business representative organisations, in providing a strong voice of business to government. We do not and should not govern in a vacuum. It is our duty and responsibility to engage and to respond to the business community. I continue to appreciate the strong working relationships that we have had with Mark, Anne, and the rest of the team. Thank you very much, and lunch is now served.